The very first night that I got her and we were all going to bed and she laid down all of a sudden. And I called my mom, it was like 10.30. I was like, mom, the pug's dying, the pug's dying. I was like, I don't know what to do. And you know, so I got online and sure enough, they just breed that way. <laughs> They've been inbred so severely for like 2,000 years that all they are designed to do is sleep on your lap. They look funny. They look like raisins and they're chubby and they make funny noises. If you search online, that's actually like sort of the joking translation is too cute to eat. People get these horribly, horribly bred dogs um, because, I mean, it's a backyard breeding problem. They're so popular because of movies and they're so cute and they snuffle and snort. And, um, and then they just pick this horribly bred dog and then they have this just horrible array of problems. Um, and it's expensive. It can be very expensive to keep them alive, so they just dump them at a shelter. They're like, we can't afford this, so that's where they end up. They're super popular, but they're also very expensive. And it's just education, like this is what you're getting into. When somebody's rescuing a pug, they're not going into it blindly and not realizing what they're getting into when they get one from Pug Rescue. So when they rescue, a, when Pug Rescue gets a dog and they hit them in a healthy position where then they can find them a home, that adopt person who adopts that pug is not going into owning a pug, which is different. I think I mean, you have to understand pugs and understand some of the complicated things that come with them. I wanted to have a dog that nobody else wanted to have. And so I visited the Pug Rescue website. And when I initially went to the website, I was looking for a, a black male pug. And the one that I wanted initially was adopted before I became approved. So when I was done with the approval process, they said, oh, you're a great pug owner. You already have one. How about a special needs female? And that's how I ended up with this one here, Cricket. Cricket uh, came into rescue as a, as a three-year-old uh, intact little female. She was blind, she had juvenile cataracts, and she was given up by a very young owner because of her chronic skin issues that she'd not been able to deal with. Very sad little case, but even with all her extensive skin problems and infections of her skin that had been going on for about two years, uh, basically untreated for two years, Always willing to lick your face, just a very happy, carefree little dog and just a, a pleasure to treat. Uh, but a very, very sad case because she'd been dealing with this for, for two years and nobody had really treated her for any of her medical problems. Somehow these dogs end up abused and neglected in the shelters and the fact that Pug Rescue comes in and they just, they just swoop them all up, it doesn't matter how horrible or how old they are, they're going to just take that dog and give it a loving home. And they're gonna do their darndest to make sure that that home is a forever home. We just have so many, this network of people that are willing to step in and make sure that these dogs go to such like a, a, a forever home. They seem really committed to get a dog, fix it, find it a home, and that's it. They place an insane number of dogs every year and uh, the health problems that they deal with are Insane. Those doctors that are providing this premium care are providing it at a discount to homeless dogs on the far extreme of what they see. You know, they learned how to do a liver shunt. They, you know, went through 17 antibiotics for cricket. They take us through heartworm uh, treatment. They are an amazing group. Without the group of doctors, we wouldn't be able to do what we do now. She's a fraction of the size of the other two dogs that we have and the, from the moment I picked her up, she licked me to death and, and I was absolutely in love. Cricket wouldn't be where she is now without all the dedication and everything from Daniel and Cena and her little personality, which is amazing. That's what really stands out, I think, with her. I love the fact that PRA will see these dogs, especially the most complicated cases and the dogs that have turned over because nobody's been able to treat them, whether they could afford it or whether they could figure it out, and that they will, will give them optimum care and see it through all the way. I mean, we, do, we don't just vaccinate, heartworm check, and bring them up to date, spay and neuter. We actually fix a lot of problems that other rescues can't afford to, and that's it's very important not only in getting them adopted, but improving their quality of life and the length of their life. To work with an organization that good and that does that much good for all these little pugs, it makes it a lot more worthwhile to do. There are our babies. I mean, he has two children. Mm -hmm. 
It feels very much like being a parent. There's no other way to describe it. We used to joke about, oh, we're gonna be, we're gonna be ready for being uh, mom and dad because we've had these pugs that are practically people. And we always said that as a joke, but it was totally true. It was a match made in heaven. They just want love and a nap and they're happy. And you know, just a cuddle or a treat makes them so happy. They're easy to please. They're so fun loving, they're so exploratory. Um, they just always put a smile on my face because they're so happy all the time. He's a good boy, huh? He's a good, good boy. Yes. That's why we do this. Like that's that's the the end game, I guess. Like we take these dogs that are beautiful, they're wonderful, they just need to be fixed, and we have the opportunity to do the best we can to fix them. I would never have picked a pug. But as many people find, oftentimes pugs pick you. Uh, once you have a pug, you probably will always have a pug for the rest of your life, and that's what got me hooked, is owning my first pug. We are completely volunteer organizations, so we are constantly taking volunteers. We need volunteers to foster. We need, we have transportation. If you're not in the Austin area, but maybe you come here often and you live in one of our, our pickup areas, San Antonio, Marble Falls, maybe you're even in the Valley. We have so many ways that you can donate your time, or if you are a special someone, donate your home to bring in a foster dog, to train them and then prepare them to go on to their forever family. Or uh, you can be a foster failure and adopt that dog. We have lots of those too. Over 98% of our income goes directly to the vet care. They thoroughly screen to make sure you're going into the right home so that you, the animal is gonna stay there. Not be dropped on the street somewhere, or dropped in another shelter or euthanized. They follow up, um, they're very thorough, so they're actually saving more lives by being conservative in that regard. Dogs need you. They are domesticated animals. They need your attention, they need your love, they need you to understand them. Um, and I don't mean that in like a froofy way, I just mean like, like they are domesticated, like they make eye contact with you. Their whole purpose of being at this point is to be a companion animal to a human. You are making a commitment to a, a critter who wants to be with you forever. And if people understood that and really took that to heart before they brought an animal into their home, I don't think we'd have this sort of problem with dogs ending up in shelters. <laughs>